<laughs> morning folks um vintage type uh shave this morning got williams mug soap this one here uh i guess you might say was menthol haven't really noticed it with my nose this one here came to me by the way of a uh, steam spray it lathered up pretty nice got uh, whipped up here with a synthetic knot uh, this brush came to me by the way of mac metalworks that's what the bottom of the shaving brush looks like and there's what it looks like there in the mug. It whipped up pretty thick without any problems. Matter of fact, I may add just a little bit more water. I didn't have any problems at all whipping this up. As it goes for any kind of scent to it, it just smells like soap. <laughs> but it whipped up just fine. Don't be following the shave up uh, this morning with uh, some Aqua Velva Ice Blue. And uh, shaver of the day. Oh, Blade. Uh, Gillette 7 o'clock. Keep it along with that uh, line. Uh, that's a uh, super platinum there. And I got it in a 1961 Gillette adjustable fat boy. I have a link down below for the date codes as well as for uh, history for the uh, uh, fat boy. Uh, this one here, it's got a, got this a little bit on the cheap side because it's got a bit of a, I don't know if the camera picked that up. It's got a bit of a bugger right there on the handle. Or it might be referred to as the barrel right through there. Of course, it works just fine. Got it on the setting number nine there. That's what we'll roll with this morning. And um, go ahead and with the face here and get started. Pre shave by this morning. Uh, there we go. Got the sweet orange still using it. But uh, this is going to be an interesting shave to see how this uh, soap holds up. It's a vintage one, so kind of think it's going to be just fine. The history of the, a uh, uh, lot of information, like I say, through that one link uh, with the history of the Gillette Fat Boy. It is, um, for me, it is, it's interesting. I, uh, when you start reading the differences in between certain models, uh, especially if you talk about uh, uh, some of the differences in between the, uh, In between the slim and the fat boy the visual ones are probably the the diameter of the handle and the knob there is a difference there but uh, as I was uh, looking yesterday online by the way you can find these fat boys uh, got it everywhere don't I <laughs> You can find these fat boys on, of course, eBay, buy, sell, trade, Etsy. Um, when I was on uh, eBay, saw a uh, bottom dial fat boy for sale, and it's on a bid. Uh, in other words, as opposed to uh, a set price, and uh, <laughs> I think it's going to uh, going price is near a thousand dollars. There's not very many of those bottom dial uh, fat boys, that's for sure. But it does uh, pique one's interest. For me, it's almost like, uh, if you will, going to a show. Sometimes when you find a good number of... Um, uh, different variety of uh, fat boys and just happened to see the uh, bottom dial which is for me just really cool just be able to see a picture of one out in the wild for sale of course they didn't make those very long there's not very many of them it did look to be in pretty good shape From what I understand, I guess there's a difference, um, a small difference when you start to look at the uh, uh, differences in between the uh, various years of the Fat Boys. Uh, this one here, I think it's the, I guess you might say the G models, if you will. In other words, right up there, they have that retainer cap right there. Uh, the previous ones, I think, have two notches on the cap, and uh, this one here does not have that. Little things here and there. Of course, the fat boy with the red dot. 
for me, you know, you can get <laughs> eyeball deep in, in the very, you know, different models and little differences here and there. But for me, it's, I, I enjoy it. It's a lot of fun reading about them. Soap's doing well. So if you can uh, find yourself some vintage Williams, uh, this soap is really nice. It, <laughs> the glide is, it, it is, it is good. At least by my estimation, it's on setting nine. And uh, not only did it glide across my face, but it did not feel aggressive. It just, it, nice quality. Speaking of um, quality and on a budget, kind of Jeremy's uh, video, I'll do one, oh, probably next week. I'll, uh, do a shave with, uh, I might be able to get to it this weekend, but it might be next week. Things are kind of busy around the house, um, work and whatnot. Uh, talk, I'm talking about uh, using White Star. Steven sent me a puck, and um, not only that, the um, not only comes in puck size as well as stick. Uh, I think it's running right around six dollars for the puck and less for the stick, but a. Uh, for those that are looking for a budget soap, might be something some folks would be interested in. I know for me, I, I enjoy, it's one thing that I guess you might say the thrill of the hunt for the, in other words, that special razor that you're looking for, this vintage, and you finally find it, and it just happens to be at a price that you know that you're willing to pay and all that sort of thing. And, you know, it is exciting to find those sort of things. Uh, Especially if you can get them on the cheap, uh, but to find a quality shaving soap uh, on the cheap uh, is also for me just very exciting. And the fact that it's also in stick form. Now the stick form is uh, sort of like Arco. It's just covered. It's just wrapped in uh, aluminum foil or aluminum type uh, um, wrapper. In other words, it's not in a plastic container that you can twist or push up or anything like that. So it is definitely on the, I guess you might say, the economy side of things. And the best I can tell, it must be a pretty decent soap. Which if you're just trying to get your shave on. In other words, if you're like me, I'm a hardware guy. Not that I don't enjoy, you know, nice soap or shaving cream or anything like that. Because I do. It's just that... Uh, if I have a choice to spend more money on hardware or do I spend it on software, I'm spending it on the hardware. For me, the hardware is uh, definitely where it's at. Uh, I've used some, uh, how can you say, uh, budget soap before and uh, shaves just fine. In other words, Williams, I can pick it up here uh, locally for about a buck 29 or 39. In other words, not expensive at all. Arco, I think the last time I checked, puck form was running right, I think right around the five dollar mark. You can catch Parasso on sale, right around the five dollar mark, and you might be able to find it at Marshalls. Brick and mortar for about the five dollars also. So, I mean, you can find some budget soap out there that, to me, is quality. I, for me, I can't complain about Parasso Arco. I do just fine with them. I know some people may not like the scent of Arco, but it doesn't. It's strong enough where my nose picks it up, and that part I appreciate. It doesn't, you know, like I say, it doesn't bother me none at all. The scent of Arco. I guess you might say, uh, it, it takes quite a bit to offend my nose because 
my nose doesn't work all that well. <laughs> so I to the wife yesterday because, you know, she was smelling something and I couldn't smell it at all. Not a, <laughs> didn't pick up, not a whiff of it at all. And I was just telling her the other day, though, that uh, my nose was working just, you know, for me, just on a rare occasion, uh, just working as well. I was thinking my nose was smelling all kinds of stuff that I hadn't smelled in quite a while. Pretty awesome. When your nose does that, when it hasn't been working in a while. I have to get it pretty close to my nose sometimes in order to smell it. I think that's probably over time reason why I'm there for a good number of years. Um, stuff that didn't have much of a scent didn't bother me to use it or if it had a scent and some folks might find it offensive my nose doesn't pick it up so I'm doing good to go <laughs> got some unscented methylated witch hazel from uh, Sterling I have to say this is probably one of my favorites as well as uh, the, some of the scented uh, the uh, for my nose uh, black ice is another one that my nose picks up quite well. This one here is just a nice cooling effect. Vintage this morning. Just, you know, awesome. I didn't know for sure. I was kind of expecting that this soap would perform similar to the Colgate that I used. Colgate that I used a, a few shades back. It just whipped up just fine. I mean, like I say, if they were still selling this today, yeah, I would use it. Not a problem. Especially if I can, you get one that's actually ventilated. You could uh, always use some, uh, let me see, I got them right over here. Uh, Sterling's Frost Drops if you wanted to add that to a, a vintage puck. But I was really interested in, you know, just how well would it perform. And yeah, this is great stuff. I can't imagine, uh, boy, how they missed out on back in the day, but... To me, this is pretty great stuff. Uh, this particular puck is, uh, w when it was made, I think it said Beecham on the bottom of it. And don't know if you'll be able to read that. It mentions Aqua Velva right there. Uh, I like that sort of thing. They have little advertisement suggestions and so on and so forth on the packaging. And that, to me, that's pretty cool. That adds to the, the value of the packaging, in my opinion. Aqua Velva, this one here is an older container. They've changed the label. And uh, still, great stuff. That's the opening there. I enjoy using this from time to time. It would be nice if they would come back or put this in glass. Make it a special edition. I don't care. Just put it in glass. <laughs> but I like this the shape of this container. Seems like most of the time you find these containers in a smaller one than this one here. This one's seven ounces, what it started out being. Uh, most of them are smaller nowadays, but I do like this size. Lasts a good long while. I had a great shave, just spectacular. Man, this is one of those great shaves that you, you look forward to from time to time using vintage products that still perform just, you know, just like new. Hope everybody's doing well. Stay safe and stay healthy and smooth shades to you.